Good morning, welcome to Howard's Front Garden. As you can see, not much grass in sight, and that's because I've been working on the project in the background for the last couple of weeks, getting it to this point. Now, yesterday we were supposed to turf the garden, but because the turf farm is having a problem with annual meadow grass at the moment, that wasn't possible. And because I reached 20,000 subscribers in the week, I said to Howard, can we seed it and give the subscribers something back? So we agreed, we had some tree work done just to free up a bit of light because it's a bit dark over there and seed wouldn't take under there. So because we reached the 20,000, like I've just said, this one is for you guys who subscribed and those of you who are yet to subscribe. It's been a great two years for me doing this channel. So I thank you because you've brought a side out of me that I never knew I had. So uh, I want to pay you back. So let's get started and I'll show you what we've been doing so far and then what we're going to do today. Right, so we're in Charlie. Five years ago, we did this but the customer's had a new drive done, so we're going to redo it. So we're going to start today. I've drafted in some help with a subscriber who's become a good friend. So let's crack on. All right, the first job we're going to do today is lift the old turf up. Now, what I've done is I've hired this turf cutter today to do that. If we had a small job, maybe like 10, 15 square metres, it wouldn't be worth hiring one of these out. But because this is getting up 160 square metres, we've hired this out just to make it a bit easier for ourselves. So we're going to take this over there and start it up, and I'll show you how. Right, so the first job, as I've said, we're going to lift the turf now. Got to logistically know what we're doing. So if we started down there and started moving the turf up, we're going to cover this up because we're getting it grabbed in, uh, grabbed out by a wagon. They're going to come. So what we're going to do is cut this area, roll it all up, and then start the pile here. And then we can start working down and moving the soil and turf over here. Because if we didn't uh, roll it up first and start a pile on here, when the grabber comes, he's not going to be able to grab this area as well. He's going to start taking big loads of soil out, which is what we don't want. So, Got to switch the engine on. That's on. Chalk on. Done. Now Joshua has just asked me a great question a minute ago. He says, how are we going to weed kill this lawn off? Now generally, if you're doing a seeding job or your grass was full of Yorkshire fog before or really coarse grasses, then you would. But because this lawn was tough five years ago with the uh, bar gold of uh, the arena bar gold, we know it's just uh, fescue, dwarf rye, and there's a bit of annual meadow grass in there. But because we're taking off quite a lot, there's no risk of any grass coming through. So we're uh, just going to not kill it off this time. Right, you take that to the plant now and uh, get rid of it and I'll film you getting rid of it. Make it look like a lightweight, you can only carry two rolls. So I just grab the spade now and I get to those areas that I can't reach with the turf cutter. back on the Wednesday now we did the other job on the Saturday so yesterday we had this taken away all the rubbish and dropped us 10 ton I know it doesn't look much but it's quite a, a deep pile so what we need to do is bring it and start filling in these but first I need to put a haunch on the back of this concrete so we're going to do that in a bit and I've got Joshua here he's going to move that 10 ton for me
Faster, faster, boy. Get it really full so it looks like you big strong lad. So today, what I want to do is, I want to bring together everything we've learned over the last two years to get our lawn looking spot on like Steve's. So what we're going to do is, we're going to, instead of using Jack's Magic, we're going to use field compost today. And what I'm going to do is, I've got 20 bags here, I'm going to spread it over all this sand and mix it in, get some organic matter in there to increase what we call our, our cation exchange capacity. And that's the ability for the sand and, and the root zone to hold on to nutrition. Because if we just left it like this, sand is in a it doesn't hold on to anything so the fertilizer we put on would leach through so adding organic matter to it will increase our cation exchange capacity meaning we're going to get more out of our fertilizers so what i'm going to do first is i'm just going to gently rake over this area and do a bit more leveling because it just needs a bit of a finer tune it's by no means finished yet and then once i've got it where i want it we're going to then mix in the 20 bags of field compost that i've got here lawn dressing number four and then we'll take it from there all right so before we start Let's just go through what tools we need today for this job. I'm going to try and do this quite comprehensive for you. So very simple, we need a rake. We've got the landscaper's rake from Screwfix. About 20 quid, one of the best things I've ever bought. Still debating whether to sew it down on the edges to make it smaller, but at the minute, keep it like that. A Stanley knife or a craft knife to slit the bags. And then we need a fork. Once we've spread the compost over the root zone, then we're going to mix it in and get it ameliorated in is the proper term. So let's start. All right, so the first job we're gonna do with our rake is we're gonna start trying to get that finished level somewhere near. We're not gonna completely get it right because we've got to mix in our compost yet. So there's no point doing a great job just yet. But there's just some high areas and some low areas from where we had the soil delivered on the, on the old lawn and they're still a bit humpy. So I wanna move that and get that spot on and then we can mix our compost in. So what I've started to do here was just have a little play and I'll show you what I'm doing. So I'm literally just getting rid of some of these bumps. What I did was here, I, I threw one bag down um, just to see how far a bag went. So I know um, how to apply it later on. So what we've got to do after we put the compost in, we've got to go on with our heels and heal all this in because it's still quite, um, there's still a lot of air in there which we'll need to come out so we can get it nice and compact. So we're on this sinkage. So like I say, we just want to get it Roughly right. A lot of people on my channel say, how would you get your lawn so flat? Well, I'm gonna let you into a little secret. They're not, they just look like that because the grass is disguising it. So I, uh, I'm um, not perfect in that sense, but I don't think a lawn should be flat. I think they look just right, fine, undulated. As long as they're not massive, you can get away with it because the grass grows and it, and it, let's say it disguises. A few years ago, I had the privilege of going on the pitch at Man United at Old Trafford and I thought, oh, it's going to be absolutely laser level. But to my shock, the pitch, it was all over the show. There was bumps, there was hollows. Couldn't believe it. So I'm not concerned if my lawns ain't level. If they can't get it totally level with laser guided machinery, I'm not going to beat myself up because I can't do it with a rake. So what I'm going to do is just continues to do this all over and then I'll see you at the end.
Okay, so I'm nearly finished. You can see how quick it begins to dry out. And that's another reason we're working in the organic matter is to hold water as well because it absolutely belted it down yesterday and this is already bone dry. It's a bit windy today, so it's drying that surface out and just over there near the tree, it's absolutely bone dry. But that probably hasn't had any water because it's had the canopy of a tree over it. But nevertheless, we want to get that organic matter mixed in to hold some moisture so the seed will grow a bit better. I did actually want to seed this today. Had the weather have played ball, I probably wouldn't have been able to anyway because it's too windy. But looking at the forecast for Monday, it's absolutely throwing it down. So I said to Howard yesterday, there's no way I'm seeding this lawn today. Because what happened five years ago when we did the back, we did it all, levelled it, seeded it, covered it. And then two days in, it absolutely belted it down for about 12 hours non-stop. And I was sat at home going, oh my God, oh my God. And I text Howard and he said, no, no, it's fine, it's fine, there's no problem. And I turned up and it was like a desert storm had happened and all the sand had washed away. But the thing was all the seed had already started to germinate. So I was dragging around germinated seed. It was absolutely awful. So I'm learning from my mistakes. And even if it alienates the customer a little bit or upsets the customer because he's expecting to have it done, never give in, believe in what you say because you'll be the one who has to put it right and it's quickly can become your fault. Not with Howard, because you wouldn't do that, but I've had other customers bully me into doing things and then when it doesn't go right, they blame you. So if you are a tradesman like me, stick to your guns because it will fall on your lap when the trouble starts. So I'll just quickly now finish this off and then we'll get mixing in the field compost and then that'll be it for today really because there's nothing more we can do what i will be doing after i've put the uh, compost on is i'll show you after something i learned at steve's that it actually did better than the lost dot job because i didn't do either of the other things but at steve's i did the two other things which meant it grew quicker and we got a better lawn quicker so i'll be doing that again but i'll give you a clue the two words start with a c and a T. All right, so we've just leveled that out, as you can see. Time to now mix in the field compost. I do have a discount code for this in the description. DHLE10, and that gives you 10% off if you want to buy some. Totally peat free from garden waste. It's really fine, really well screeded. Better than Jack's Magic because it's just not got any lumps and bumps in like that as and the new stuff isn't that great to be honest. So I started using this. You wanted peat free, you got peat free. Don't moan at me because it's a little bit more expensive. That's just the way it is when you want these things. So all you warriors out there who have been on at me all the time, like I said last time, you know, you should be using peat free, you're, you're causing global warming, me on my own, you know, like you're using plastic, all this. Suddenly, like, I'm the reason for the world go, going under. And then I come up with new ways, but then you have something else to mourn about. And like I said last time, you know, I'll, you'll be mourning at me because I'm using a plastic bag, but I'm not using a plastic bag. I didn't put it in the plastic bag. It just came in a plastic bag. So then I'll use a biodegradable bag, or they will. And then you'll say like something else and something else. And then at the end, I just said, I have to quit breathing because I'm using CO I'm emitting CO2. So let's just go with the peat free for now. And then when they start bringing biodegradable stuff out on a usable scale, they'll probably then start using biodegradable bags. But until then, it's gotta be plastic. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this over. I'll just do very light application all over first and then we'll see how far the bag goes because what I don't want to do is put too much in in one spot start at that ratio and then end up running out halfway around and then we've got half the lawn with the compost and half not because I can't buy any more one because it's uh would be too costly 
and secondly i won't be able to get it here before i want it to feed on tuesday so let's just uh let's say, do it lightly and see how we get on it's really good to spread it's really warm as well so that's a good sign that means there's loads of bacteria in there because it's getting really warm and then when we add what i'm going to put on as well the compost tea if you guessed it right well done i've got a brooder mixed up yesterday left it on overnight so it um came this morning so let's just have a quick look how i did that while i carry on doing this all right so i've got my brew on in here you can hear the air pump pumping the air in through the bottom and then it comes in through the top as well you can hear the air coming out and if we have a look in i'll just turn it off so this is now ready to harvest so what we do is We get the compost and we put it in the net and then when we lift it out so you can see there a lot of bubbles and that's from the bacteria in there so we know it's alive because there's carbon dioxide in, on the top there so that means the bacteria is what fermenting or whatever pull this out When the compost is in, in there, and then we pull that out, and then that leaves behind the compost tea. So what I'm going to do now is get my measuring jug, siphon that out, and put it in a bottle, ready to go back to Charlie. Okay, so I just started to show you up close the peat free compost, just spread it out. So you can see it really fine, screed it to four mil. So all this goodness is going to pay us back in dividends next year and year on that year. What it's also going to do, it's going to get bacteria in the soil as well as moisture, which is going to unlock nutrition because a lot of nutrition, like urea for example, which is a form of nitrogen can't be taken up by the plant until it's been broken down so you need that bacteria in there to do that so this is another reason why we're doing that and what you're going to find is as well it's going to break down nutrition that you're not putting on it's going to break down all this organic matter into a form that the plant can take up so also you're going to see longevity at your fertilizers so in the long run you're going to save money so over the years what you invest in this compost now will pay you back in savings in products Okay, so that's all spread. Empty pallet, 20 bags gone. Went over, five bags extra. So I just went over and just topped up a few areas that maybe I didn't put enough on. So what I'm gonna do now is fork this in. I've blown off the drive because a little bit went on the drive and what we don't want is that compost settling in the bot paving joints and creating weed, uh, m weed growing medium. So um, blew that off, back on. And what I'm gonna do now is fork. Just literally to get the arduous task of now forking in this compost and mixing it in with the root zone. Yeah, we're bringing back up the soil that we've already compacted somewhat, but let the rain hit it on Monday and then I'll go a long way to getting it flat again. And then we'll do our final level when we come to do our seeding when we get here after that. So I'll crack on here and then I'll see you when I'm done. Thank you. 
now that barking of that soil was very hard work it took me about an hour so i'm pumped ready to go now on with the compost tea which i mixed earlier which you saw going in the sprayer if you've had anything in there that kills weed killer for example for your lawns you've got to make sure your tanks rinsed out thoroughly before you start putting bacteria in because there's a chance you could kill it like if you're using professional and using fungicides then you would want to wash that out as well before you stick that in what i'm going to do today is as well well we've got the opportunity because i know compost and sand get dry patched very easily i'm going to put some wetting agent in well i've already done it it's in my water they're ready to go in my tank and whilst we're at it let's get some stella on and then once the um, seed germinates there's something for it to uh, go and get because as you know we don't use pre-seed fertilizers so what i'm going to do is First of all, I'm gonna, I'll leave that filter in for now because it'll filter out the, uh, the compost that might still be in the compost tea. So that's my mixture of wetting agent and water going in. I've put 600 mils of wetting agent in because it's roughly about 150 square metres that long. So I went on at the higher rate. And what that is going to do, if it does rain, after we've done the job, it's going to ensure that the water goes through rather than sit on the surface. If it gets too much water and it's naturally not going to drain, then you're obviously, it is going to flood then, but that is a bit of a godsend early doors if it's just a little bit of rain and you want to keep that water moving through the surface. So I'm going to put my Stella in. I'm just going to put a blob in, doesn't matter. It's not going to have any effect. There's no grass there, so we're not going to see any a variation in color or anything like that. And then in with the compost tea, there's 10 liters of like pure concentrate in here. The manufacturer of it says when he makes his concentrate himself, he says you can actually just pour it. If you had a lawn already there, you could just pour it in one area and that would be all right. It would then spread across, but because we're putting the seed down, I'm going to spray it all over. I don't need to be really accurate, but I'm going to spray it all over anyway. It just goes in, put my filter in. I can see already there's a bit of compost just slipped through the, the net because I made a bit of a schoolboy error yesterday because I've not mixed any for a while. I literally just threw the compost in the brewer without putting the net in first. So there's a little bit in the bottom um, before I scooped it and then put it through the net. Apologies for that one, but I've got this filter here so it'll do its job. See, it's really thick. You could water this down, probably make 200 litres and you would still have a really good effect, but because I would actually bought the brewer, which actually is, uh, we can really go to town on uh, this lawn, really get some bacteria and goodness in that soil. There you go, so we've uh, filtered out that much stuff, which would have necessarily gone in there and blocked up a filter. So another thing to uh, remember when you're spraying compost tea is that you can't do it in sunlight. It was sunny early, so I was worried I wasn't gonna be able to do it, but the sun's gone in now and, and it's gonna be dark and three or four hours. So I don't think it's gonna come back out looking at the forecast because the UV light would kill the bacteria. But by the time it comes out next, it'll have whipped its way into that soil and uh, hidden away from it. So let's get this sprayed and then it's time to go on. Okay, so that's part one over and done with. Join me next time when we're doing part two, funnily enough, uh, which will be leveling the seedbed. And then after that, we'll do part three, which will be doing the seeding. And then we'll do part four, which will be looking after the new seed once we've taken the covers off. And if there's any more parts to be added, we'll make it up as we go along as we always do. So until then, take care and see you next time.